Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to the session of AWS. So everyone able to see my screen? Can anyone confirm all in this? Yes. Yes. So can you hear me everyone? My voice is audible, right? Yeah, it's audible, clear. Yeah. Fine. So welcome to welcome to the session of uh, AWS. Yeah. So let me introduce myself first before going to the session. Yeah. My name is Rom. I'm having uh, 17 years of experience in IT. Last eight years, I'm working on cloud and DevOps practices, and I'm working on multiple projects governed by the cloud and DevOps technologies. Right. So currently, I'm working with uh, one MNC company as a senior architect fine yeah let's get started fine yeah today's agenda here is uh, yeah what is uh, what is cloud what are the services available in cloud why the project teams are looking for cloud right so these are all uh, we are going to discuss, right? Yeah. So here agenda is what is cloud computing, benefits of cloud computing, types of cloud computing, types of cloud services, what is cost saving, why the project teams are looking for cloud infrastructure. So currently whoever using the physical servers, physical data centers, they are looking for cloud data centers, cloud infrastructure. Why they are looking for cloud infrastructure, right? So we'll go deep drive. Right. Still, people are connecting. Uh, yeah, some people are pinging me, and un unable to connect. Okay, Vani, can you reconnect? Can you log off and log in again? I think you are unable to see uh, screen. Right? Can you log out and log in again? Vani, I think. You can just log out and log in. Fine. So if you are getting any disturbance or if you are unable to see the screen, if you are if you are not audible, uh, yeah, if I am not audible. So just let me know, right? Yeah, let's get started. Fine. So what is cloud? What is cloud computing? What is cloud? We'll try to understand first. Okay. Yeah. What is cloud computing? Anyone having idea? What is cloud computing? Any real time guys? Anyone having idea? What is cloud computing? Yeah, I am Fine. Cloud computing. What is cloud computing? Anyone? Am I audible? Everyone? Yes. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. What is cloud computing? Yes, sir. So here, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead, please. It is a on-demand availability of computer system, resources, storage, and computing power without direct active management by the user. So this is the definition which I collected from Google. What does it mean? What does it mean? Let's try to understand. Let, let's assume that there is no cloud concept, right? So all our infrastructure is hosted in our local data center, local server room, right? Yeah. So when we have local server room, local data center, who will take care of the servers? Anyone? So this is interactive session. So you can just interact with me. So if you have any questions, you can ask me, right? Yeah. So if you know, you just uh, speak out, right? Otherwise, uh, you can uh, mute. No issues. I'll explain. Fine. Yeah. So when we have local data center, local server room, who will take care of the servers, right? 
So cloud computing is nothing but cloud computing is nothing but on-demand availability of computer system resources, storage, and the computing power without a direct active management by the user. Right? What does that mean? So, for example, there is no cloud concept. We are using physical servers, local servers. So, when we have local servers, we will take care of that. Local admins, right? Server admins will take care of the servers, right? Network admins will take care of the network, right? Respective engineers will take care of the resources, right? So, when we have local servers, we'll take full control of them, right? Yeah, so non IT guys, freshers, don't confuse, okay? So, this is introduction only. So, when we start working on services, cloud platform will do, will go deep drive. Every concept slowly, slowly will enter into cloud. We don't directly go to cloud, right? First, we'll try to understand basics, servers, networks, features. After that, slowly, slowly will enter into cloud uh, cloud platforms, right? So don't confuse here, right? Yeah. So when we have local infrastructure servers, local engineers will take care of the resources. So when uh, when we have local servers, we'll take the full control of them, right? So for example, we have local servers in our local data center, right? If any issues happen with the server, we can go directly into the data center and we can uh, check the server physically, right? And uh, we can take full control. That was the case few years ago. However, with the introduction of cloud, everything has been changed now. So our infrastructure is no longer sitting inside of our local data center, right? So rather it is being offered by a cloud provider like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, right? Ali Cloud, DigitalOcean, Fastly, Heroku, different clouds are there. 25 more clouds are there, right? AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. These are the topmost clouds, right? Yeah, fine. So whatever services we are using from cloud for that uses, we are paying the bills like gas bills, electricity bills, right? For example, if you if you use any server for one hour, we can pay the bills for one hour only, right? If you use the server from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., for that nine hours only, we have to pay the bills, right? It's a kind of renting, right? Yeah. So whatever infrastructure we are using in cloud, those are that infrastructure is highly scalable on-demand infrastructure on-demand what is on-demand anyone what is on-demand if required we can use like we will use if required otherwise we will not use not pay something like that. right yeah on-demand is nothing but so whenever we require any servers our storage our network that should be available immediately within one minute so that is nothing but on-demand right so for example i required one server if I go with physical server, can I can I access physical server immediately? No, right? We need to install operating system. We need to configure the server. We need to update the patches. We need to test the server. We need to move to production. That will take some time, right? But when we when we want to have cloud server, that will be available immediately. That should be available immediately, right? So which is nothing but on demand. So in cloud infrastructure, cloud <laughs> platform, we can create any server within one minute. Not only one server, 100 servers, 1000 servers also we can create within one minute in cloud. That is scalable infrastructure, on demand infrastructure. Yeah, someone asking some question here. Go ahead, please. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can unmute and you can ask, or else you can mute yourself. Otherwise, the recording will be disturbed, right? Yeah. Fine. So it is a on-demand infrastructure, right? Now, so this is a Google Drive. This is Google Drive, right? So where we find this drive, Google Drive? Where we see this? Where we get this? In Gmail, right? So when we open Gmail, when we check the Gmail, right? When we connect the Gmail account, we can see the Google Drive, right? Yeah. So when you upload any files into Google Drive, where those files will be saved for example i upload some pdfs into google drive so where those files will be saved remote server back end there will be a server back end there will be a server so actually it is not a server it is a data center so when we upload any files into google drive those files will be uploaded to upload to directly into google data center right 
Yeah. So basically, what is data center? We are talking about data center, right? What is data center? Where data is stored. Yeah. So data center is nothing but it says simply you can say server room. Server room, right? So where we host all the servers, where we host all the servers, right? So people will call it as hub room or network room, right? So basically it is a server room where we host all the servers, right? Yeah, in data centers, we host servers Storages, network, switches, routers, load balancers, right, etc. These are the these all are the devices which we host in the server room, data center, right? So we'll take care of the servers. Respective engineers will take care of the servers, storage, networks, switches, routers, etc. Right? Fine? Yeah. Now, let us try to understand advantages of, advantages of cloud. Advantages of cloud computing. Yeah. So, for example, Yeah, there is a Java project. Let us take small project, which is a Java project, Java project, right? So when you want to start any project, very first thing, what we required here, we required, what we required here, when you want to start any project, Java project, what we required, we required servers, right? We'll take care of the servers. Yeah, server team, right? Like yeah. admins will take care, right? Yeah, so this is a Java project. For example, this is a, startup company startup right so this is the first project startup company they're trying to get from us client for example okay yeah so before getting a real project from client there will be some process every project team every organization they follow some process before getting real project from client okay so what is the process that is we can say pre-sales process pre-sales process right yeah before getting this project before getting any project from any client so we need to prepare some poc what is poc we need to prepare one poc and showcase to client if they approve the poc proof of concept. Get yeah it's a proof of concept proof of concept yes proof of concept right what is proof of concept anyone what is proof of concept we need to showcase something proof right for example if you want to buy any laptop or mobile what we will check some proof some testimonies right and then only we will proceed for the uh, mobiles or laptops right yeah the same way when we want to get any real profit so we need to prepare one poc and we need to showcase this POC to client if the client is approved we get the real project right so this poc normally will take uh, 45 days timeline 45 days timeline to complete the POC. Once it is completed, we can showcase to client. POC means sample project. We can say sample project. That we need to showcase to client, right? Yeah. For this POC, client asks you to take three development servers, three QA servers, testing, three production servers, right? So why we require three types of servers? We can take only one server, right? Why we need to take three types of servers here? Because developers, the... develop... yes, developers develop the code on development servers, right? So once development is completed, testing will be happened on QA, quality assurance servers. Once the quality assurance is completed, then the application will be deployed onto production. That is why we take three, uh, three are more than three environments like infrastructure types of servers, right? 
So once the development is completed in development servers, they don't directly deploy onto production. So before that, testing should be happened, right? So every organization, every project team, they try to give best uh, best applications like uh, without errors, right? So that is where testing should be happened here. Yeah. So normally development uh, uh, activity first to 30 days, developers will work on development servers, right? Once development is completed from 31 days to 40 days, testing will be happened, right? Once the testing is completed from 41 days to 45 days, application deployment will be happened on production servers. So this is the process actually every organization, every project team, they follow, right? Yeah. So this is a, yeah, this is physical setup. We can say this is a not cloud setup, physical servers. So I'm talking about physical servers. Once complete this, we'll jump into cloud infrastructure. Okay. So in physical servers, what will happen? We are trying to understand, right? Yeah. Now, so three types of servers we take here and the developers will work on development servers for first 30 days. Once completed, once complete the development, then testing will be happened. After that, the application will be deployed onto production. So after that, we can showcase to client. This is the process actually we follow, right? Yeah. So if you want to perform this POC before getting these servers, before getting the servers, we need to take licensing, licenses for servers, operating system, right? Applications. First, we need to get the licensing, right? So for example, if you want to get any licensing, software license, a minimum, what the minimum period would be? Uh, for example, Windows in our laptop Windows we are using, right? So if you want to get Windows license, minimum time period would be like minimum, how many months we, uh, we get that minimum when you want to have any Windows license. Minimum? Three months? Six months? Nine months? No, not like that. Basically, minimum one year. Any license, minimum one year. We get minimum one year licensing, right? So this POS is 45 days. If you want to get 45 days license, they don't provide, right? So minimum one year license we need to take, right? Yeah. And also here, we need to recruit one admin to set up the servers, right? Also, we need to have some network, network, right? And also we required server room, right? We required AC to configure the servers. Without AC, servers will not work. So when we enter into the data center, so minus degrees will get the temperature, we'll see the temperature, minus degrees in data center, right? Without AC, servers will not work, right? And also we required uh, security, server room security. So these are all required to configure the physical servers, physical setup, right? Yeah. So this is physical setup and uh, physical uh, data center. I'm talking about physical environment, right? In physical data center, these are all required. Fine. Yeah. So here, this POS is approved, will get the real project. If the POS is not approved, what will happen? This is the waste of money, right? Because this is startup company, first project we are getting, trying to get the uh, yeah, trying to getting, uh, trying to get from client first project. So if you have any other projects, we can move the servers to other project. But this is the first project, right? So that is why this is the waste of money. So if the project, if the POS is rejected by client, if the POS is approved, it is fine. You get real project. The POS, if the POS is rejected, this is the waste of money, right? Yeah. Now we'll try to understand. So this is a this is a physical environment. Now let us try to understand cloud environment, cloud infrastructure. So cloud advantages we'll try to understand. This is physical infrastructure, right? So now cloud cloud infrastructure. Now same Java project. Yeah, it's a startup company same POC right so 45 days timeline right yeah 
in cloud infrastructure what will happen so whenever we require any servers we can create within one minute but here three servers development three server queue three servers production at a time we need to place the order with vendors like dell vendor hp vendor we need to place the order with vendor we'll get the servers and we need to configure we need to test the servers this will take some time that is why we place the order at a time all the servers but in cloud infrastructure so whenever we require any servers we can create within one minute right yeah so what we will do here first we can create three servers for development environment dev servers okay for first 30 days right once the development is completed what we can do again we can create three more servers we no need to create at a time because we can create servers within one minute one server or 100 servers or 1000 servers right yeah once the development is completed now we can create three more servers for qa for 31 days to 40 days right once the testing is completed we can create three more servers for production Forty-one days to forty-five days, right? We no need to create at a time all the servers here because so clouds, cloud is uh, cloud servers are on-demand servers, right? Yeah. So here, when we use cloud servers, we don't need to take any licensing. No licensing required here. No licensing because vendor will take care. No license required here. Vendor will take care. AWS will take care. Azure will take care. Google Cloud will take care right yeah so when we use uh, respective platforms they will take right yeah now no admin needed here to configure servers because cloud engineers will configure the servers no need to recruit any admins here no admins right yeah no network needed cloud vendor will take care of the network calls right yeah no server room vendor will take care aws right no central AC for servers here, right? No data center security. They will take care, right? So everything will be taken care by cloud vendor only. As a as a customer, what we will do? We can connect to cloud. We can use them resources. We don't need to manage. We don't need to create a physical environment here, right? Yeah. Fine. So here also same, right? Here also same. So here we are using physical servers. Here we are using cloud servers, right? So here what will happen? If the POC is success, it is fine. If the POC is not success, what will happen here? This is also waste of money, right? But what will happen here? So if the cloud environment, in the cloud environment, if the POC is rejected by client, what will happen? For example, $100 will be wasted. For example, I'm saying here, okay? But a physical environment, what will happen? $500 will be wasted here because we need to procure the servers, we need to procure the licensing, we need to recruit the admin, right? We need to configure the servers, network, server room, AC, everything we need to configure physically, right? But a cloud infrastructure, we don't require all these things, right? So we can connect from our laptop to cloud, we can use the resources. Whatever servers we are using, for that server only we get the bill how many hours you are using for that hours only will get the bills right fine so these are the major advantages with cloud that is why most of the project teams whoever using physical data centers physical servers they are migrating their applications to cloud data center cloud servers right so currently in our project five years back we used to use thousand servers in our data center currently we don't have thousand servers we have only 30 servers because we migrated to cloud. Any questions up to here, anyone? Hello, sir. Sir, you are telling about the three uh, development server, three QA server. That is the uh, example one, right? Or uh, any mandatory things? Uh, Three use of three development servers in that point of view, you will right?
You are not audible. It's not audible. Yes, not audible. Yes, not audible. Fine. Now it is fine, right? Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Yeah. So cloud computing is having uh, five essential characteristics, three service models, and four deployment models. What are those? We'll try to understand. First one is on-demand. On-demand infrastructure. So whatever servers we are using, those are on-demand, right? What is on-demand? What is on demand? Anyone? Instant requirement. Instant requirement. Instant resources. Right? Yeah. So, for example, I'm working on some uh, project. I require 10 more servers. Right? So, if I want to get physical servers, it is possible? Is it possible to get physical servers immediately? No. Right? You need to place the order with vendor. They deliver within one week. After that, we can configure the servers. Uh, we need to install operating system, applications, patches, whatever, right? So after that, we'll move to production. That will take some time, right? But cloud infrastructure, so whenever you want to have any servers, right? That should be available immediately, right? In AWS, you can create 100 servers or 1,000 servers within one minute. So while working on AWS, we'll see that practically, right? Yeah, on-demand is nothing but, so whenever we need any resources, that should be available immediately, right? Which is nothing but on demand. Next one, broad network access. What is this? Broad network access. Whatever servers we are using in cloud, AWS, right? That servers we can access from anywhere, from your home, from your office, from anywhere we can access our cloud servers, right? Which is nothing but broad network access. Next one, resource pooling. What is resource pooling? Whatever servers we are using, that we can pull it up and we can reuse a number of times, right? For example, yeah, I'm working on one server, one project. So the project is completed, right? So whatever storage attached to the server, that storage we can keep somewhere and we can delete the server once complete the project. So this is on-demand infrastructure. So if you use the servers for that uses, we need to pay the bills, right? Once we create the server, once we hand over to project right as a cloud engineer what we will do what is our role in cloud <coughs> anyone any real time guys in cloud what we will do what is our role as a cloud engineer aws engineer what we will do we create infrastructure what is infrastructure servers network storage we create infrastructure that we can handle that we can create and we can manage the infrastructure right yeah, so for example, in real time projects, we get one request, one ticket. So, ticket means like a service now ticket, a Jira ticket, these are the ticketing systems, right? Once we get the ticket, as per the ticket, as per the request, customer request, we create the server and hand over to project team in cloud platform, right? So, once we hand over the server to project team, they start the development, right? So, once the project is completed, what they will do? They ask us to Terminate the server. Terminate. Terminate means delete. In AWS, that is the terminology. Terminate means delete. Okay. So once they ask you to terminate the server, we need to terminate the server. At the same time, whatever storage we attach to the server, that we need to store somewhere. We need to keep somewhere. Right. So whenever they require the data, that storage we can attach to other servers, we can head over. Because critical project data will be there in the storage. So if you delete the storage, what will happen? Escalations will be happened, right? So that is why we need to store the, we need to keep the data in safe mode, yeah, in somewhere in the data center. So whenever they, re, they need the data, we need to provide, which is nothing but a resource pooling. We can pull it up and we can reuse. A number of times, a number of times we can reuse the existing resources, which is nothing but resource pooling. Next one, rapid elasticity. What is this? So whatever servers we are using in cloud, those are elasticity. We can increase the resources, we can decrease the resources by single click. By single click, for example, I'm working on some database server, right? 
so i'm getting some performance issue middle of the activity i'm getting some performance issue right so on the fly i can increase the ram i can increase the cpu i can increase the storage which is nothing but rapid elasticity right so next one measured service what is measured service yeah whatever servers we are using those are measured like for example if you use for one day the server you need to pay the bill for one day only right if you use the server one hour per day you need to pay the bills for one hour only like gas bills electricity bills right yeah so measured service is nothing but yeah how many hours you are using the server for that uses we need to pay the bills clear right everyone any questions on this slide anyone having any questions here can you explain once again broad network access broad network access right so whatever resources we are using in cloud those are those are accessible from anywhere from your office from your home even though from your mobile also you can access the stories with the proper authentication without authentication it will not be accessible right yeah broad network means we can access from anywhere clear right any other questions anyone right so server we can delete but volume we can save somewhere whenever they need the data we can provide the data cost uh, zero cost no 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 the volume cost costing will be happening yes so cloud is all about costing so everywhere costing right clear right everyone yeah next one we have three service models service models so ias pas SAS. What is IAS? Infrastructure as a service, right? Platform as a service, software as a service. What is infrastructure as a service, right? So in cloud, what we will do? We create infrastructure. On top of that, we deploy different applications like uh, Java and um, Tomcat, Git, Jenkins, Kubernetes, whatever, right? We create servers. On top of that, we deploy the applications, which is nothing but infrastructure as a service, right? Second one, platform as a service. What is this? So in cloud, platform already available, right? So for example, in AWS, we have EKS services available. EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. That is platform as a service. Once we log into the AWS console, we can directly use the services, which is nothing but PaaS, platform as a service, right? Next one, software as a service. What is this? This is mainly for reusability right like google drive one drive amazon shopping site right so which is nothing but saas software as a service right mainly for reusability so these are the three service models important service models right any questions here anyone yeah next one three deployment models four deployment models what are those first one private cloud hybrid cloud community cloud and public cloud what is private cloud what is private cloud so private cloud is nothing but our on premises servers on premises cloud local data center cloud for example vmware citrix hypervisor that is our office premises that is private cloud right next one public cloud we can discuss about public cloud public cloud is nothing but it is a aws cloud azure cloud google cloud right third party cloud which is nothing but public cloud so next one important one which is hybrid cloud what is hybrid cloud anyone having idea what is hybrid cloud real time guys it is the multiple cloud multiple platform right combination of both public and private 
so currently most of the organizations they are using hybrid cloud right for example let us take uh, banks hdfc icic banks they are using hybrid cloud they want to host their accounts databases in their local data center local private cloud they want to host their websites in public cloud like net banking sites and other sites they are hosting in public cloud right yeah so hybrid cloud is nothing but both private and public <coughs> next one community cloud what is community cloud it's a government cloud defense cloud right third this is a high security cloud no one can enter into this cloud right so we have here four deployment models are available so most of the organizations they are using hybrid okay some companies they are using private only some companies they are using public only right yeah so most of the banking domains insurance domains they are using hybrid cloud and these are the four deployment models so is mr jeff bezos who invented uh, aws right so aws uh, born in 2002 right 2002 right yeah so initially they started uh, selling uh, books they started uh, e-commerce business right initially they prepared the cloud platform for their business okay slowly slowly they entered into the market they started giving the services to third parties like companies right so currently is the leader is in first place aws is in first place currently right if you search in google world richest man is in second place currently okay yeah so jeff bezos who invented aws right so aws occupied 33% of the market share right other percent other clouds like azure occupied 18% google cloud occupied 9% like that so other clouds occupied remaining percent right 33% of the market share occupied by aws right so these are the top most clouds available in the market aws Amazon Web Services is in, is in first place. So yeah, Azure, Microsoft Azure is in second place. Google Cloud is in third place. So yeah, these are the quadrants. Every every quarterly will get some report, right? Who is in first place? Who is in second place? What is the percentage? We'll get the report, right? So last quadrant we we have checked this is the Amazon is the Amazon Web Services is in first place. Microsoft is in second place. Google is in third place. so google is investing more on google cloud so maybe going forward after one year after two years this google cloud will come to second place okay yeah next one alibaba cloud oracle cloud ibm cloud different clouds are there those are small players right yeah so these are the three clouds which are uh, in top most position right aws and microsoft azure and google cloud right so most of the companies they are using aws right so aws and microsoft azure or aws google cloud like that so if you understand aws you can easily understand other platforms also so aws is the blueprint for all other platforms right aws is the first platform so which is blueprint for other platforms if you are good in aws you can handle any cloud platform right so all the functionality is same right terminology will be little different if you are good in driving you can drive any car right yeah so if you are good in aws you can uh, yeah you can handle any cloud platform fine right? yeah so cloud computing providers so these are the providers available in the market right so different providers are available yeah cloud market share here so amazon occupied 33% of the market share azure occupied 18% google cloud occupied 9% alibaba cloud 6% ibm 5% salesforce 3% technet 2% oracle cloud 2% right right can you mute everyone if you have any questions you can ask so this is the cloud market growth cloud platforms market growth right so last since uh, long i am seeing this okay so market is going like this only right so because uh, the physical data centers are migrating to cloud data centers because 
why they are migrating to cloud what is the importance here physical application physical servers uh, yeah local data center application they are migrating to cloud why they are migrating why they are using cloud servers because of cost saving right so client always look for the cost saving right yeah that is why most of the data centers they are migrating to cloud because of cost saving so when we use physical environment yeah when we use cloud environment cloud data centers cloud uh, infrastructure one third cost will be saved one third cost yeah cost saving is very important so client always look for the costing which is nothing but cost optimization right Yeah, so these are the things. Any questions up to here, anyone? Yeah, only about cost saving or is there, is there any other uh, uh, right. parameters? Right. Good question. Cost saving, on-demand infrastructure, scalable infrastructure. Right? So cost saving, on-demand infrastructure, scalable infrastructure. And high availability, okay. high security. These are the advantages. That is why, so every project in are migrating their infrastructure to cloud. I scalable scalability means we can scale servers whenever uh, required resources we can calibrate by single click right high availability what is high availability anyone right yeah high availability is nothing but uh, whatever applications we are we are host on the cloud servers we, we host on the cloud servers those are highly available cloud data centers like uh, cloud vendors they don't stop any servers they don't uh, stop any applications without information right so highly available so availability is most important if the applications are not available for example we are using flipkart amazon shopping site if the flipkart store is not reachable application is not accessible what we will do we can switch to other site right so, so that what will happen business will be impacted right that is why cloud infrastructure whatever we are using the infrastructure is highly available vendor uh, yeah if they are if they are unable to provide high availability for example aws is unable to provide the high availability what we will do we will switch to other platforms that is why so aws is giving high availability highly available whatever servers we are using whatever storage we are using those are highly available right and security second one is security yeah so if you want to connect cloud server how can we connect through internet right so internet is the most vulnerable network right so that is why aws is providing very good security to protect the customer applications customer data right availability security is the most important every customer if they want to opt any cloud they want to opt cloud platform they ask first security and availability. That's the first concern every customer raises. Right? So that is why AWS is providing high availability, high security, scalable infrastructure, on-demand infrastructure, and less costing resources. Right? So that is why every project team they are migrating their infrastructure to cloud. Right? Uh, now let us uh, go and check the course content. What is the difference? Uh, excuse me. What is the difference between cloud provider and cloud vendor? Cloud provider, same? vendor, both are same. Yeah, cloud provider, cloud both vendor. Are same. Both are same, yes. Both are same. Yeah, now we'll try to, uh, we'll check the course content. I'll provide you this course content. Yeah. So here, uh, this is the course content, AWS course content, introduction to cloud computing, types of cloud computing, right? Deployment models, cloud services offerings, right? AWS account creation, how to how to create a feeder account. So AWS account one year free, right? So we can use one year free without any charges, right? So we connect to AWS cloud, we can practice in AWS only in order to install in our local system. Right, so directly you can connect to AWS. So just open here. 
just go to browser just give here open chrome Just give aws.amazon.com, aws.amazon.com, click on sign in. So this is the, see here, this is my AWS account, this is the AWS cloud platform. So you can directly connect to the AWS and we can work on AWS. We required one laptop, internet connectivity, that's it. Don't need to install anything in our local laptop. Okay. So see here how to create AWS account, which is one year free without any charges. They don't charge anything for one year, right? In AWS account, you can practice. Next one, EC2 instances. What is EC2? How can we create infrastructure like servers, EC2 instance, right? We'll go deep drive. All these are like services, AMI, AWS, EC2 instance, on-demand uh, instance pricing, yeah, reserved instance pricing spot instances these are all will go deep drive what is key pair what is ami what is elastic ip what is how can we migrate ec2 instances right next one networking part so networking part is very very important here vpc virtual private cloud what is vpc private cloud what is private cloud what is what is private subnet what is public subnet right so different uh, uh, ways we can work on this vpc peering so how can we connect two different vpcs right uh, what is NAT instance, NAT gateway, transist gateways, VPC endpoints, VPC flow logs. These are all we can work on. So VPC is very, very important here, networking part. This will take uh, two to three days. Yeah, more than three days it will take. Okay, we'll go deep right. Now, elastic block storage, EBS volume. What is elastic block storage? How can we create the volume? How can we attach the volume to servers? How can we work on volumes? How can we expand volumes? How can we delete volumes? How can we resizing? How can we migrate volumes? We'll go deep drive, right? Volume is nothing but storage, server storage. See here, elastic load balancer, ELB. What is ELB? Classic load balancer, application load balancer, network load balancer. We'll go deep drive. These are very, very important concepts, right? Load balancing. So auto scaling groups, auto scaling. How can we scale up servers automatically? How can we scale down automatically, right? So we'll go deep drive. Next one, simple storage service S3. What is S3? How can we create S3 storage? How can you upload files? How can we work on S3? How can we versioning the files, right? We'll go deep drive. So cross region replications, how can we enable this? We'll go deep drive. So identity access management, right? See here, this is a IAM account. So when we go into the project, we get one user account, which is IAM account. How can we work on IAM? How can we create IAM users? How can we control IAM users, right? Yeah, CloudWatch, which is monitoring tool. CloudWatch is monitoring tool. We'll go deep drive. And uh, yeah, databases also will be covered here. Databases will go deep drive. RDS, relational database. Okay, we'll go deep drive here. So configure backups, right? Creating uh, database, right? Configuring database, selecting database, right? So connecting to the database, configuring scheduled device maintenance, right? And uh, yeah, Route 53. DNS. How can we work on Route 53? This will go deep drive. And uh, simple services. So SQS, SNS, SES. Three services are there. Simple services. Okay. These are the notification services. We'll go deep drive. So Elastic File System. One of the storage. This is one of the storage. How can we work on this Elastic File System? CloudFront. One of the services available. CloudFront. We'll go deep drive. And uh, KMS. Key management service will go deep drive. Elastic Beanstack also will be covered here. Yeah, Cloud Trail, Cloud Formation, Terraform. Terraform also a little bit covered here. Terraform. Okay. Yeah. So here, these are the things will be covered. So AWS Lambda also will be covered. AWS Lambda, right, will be covered here. So this course content I'll provide to you. And even Linux also will be covered here. So after completing a few sessions, Linux will be covered. Once complete the Linux, we'll go one by one. All the service, networking part, storage part, because we required a few commands, right? That is why uh, we are going through Linux modules. These are the Linux modules. 
we are going through right yeah ticketing systems job support faqs resume preparation placement assistance so forwarding resumes to companies yeah interview crack level training will be provided here okay so every concept every service will go deep drive this course duration is how many days 45 days 45 days right so what is the costing you know right this is the offer price right yeah so from tomorrow onwards regular sessions will be started yeah today uh, some people missed to attend the session so already 80 members registered 80 members right yeah so from tomorrow onwards regular sessions will be started so 6 pm to 7 pm ist every day monday to friday right only monday to friday fine so you can attend classroom or online training so if you have any questions you can reach out to me right yeah so my mobile number i can provide you so i can provide uh, normally trainers they never give numbers personal numbers right i can give my number here every student is having my number okay yeah online guys can you provide your uh, email address and whatsapp number here so that we'll provide your recording session course content and documents can you provide in the chat everyone uh, one second uh, Ram. hello yeah go ahead please uh, yeah coming to terraform uh, uh, how much you cover please. the terraform no. like uh, you are can going you to speak you like only briefly uh, <coughs> coming to terraform uh -huh. uh, you will cover like briefly or uh, actually i don't know about uh, terraform no. you are why is uh, coding yeah, part yeah. Can you speak a bit louder? Actually, I'm talking about uh, coming Terraform. Mm -hmm. Hello. Terraform. Yeah, yeah, Terraform, is, uh, 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 Terraform is a full coding part, or like it's uh, uh, supporting only. Terraform is a tool. It is a infrastructure automation tool. Infrastructure automation tool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that will be covered. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, what about the uh, certification support, sir? Certification support, yes. Good question. Yeah. Oh, I give you support, right? So, this course will help you to clear the associate level exam. And even though you can write professional also, how can you clear the, how can you clear your exam? I'll guide you, right? If you need any support, I'll provide you support also, right? Yeah. Okay, I sir, just gave you. my number here in the chat. Can you check everyone? This is my personal number. You can take down 9642211711 is my number. You can reach out to me if you have any questions. Right? Everyone, can you provide your uh, mobile number and uh, WhatsApp number and email address here? So that will provide you recording session. My mobile number is 9642211711. You can take down this number. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Is there, uh, me. <clears throat> is there any coding or programming using in this AWS? No, no. In AWS, we don't have any coding. What kind of projects uh, will you cover in this program? Right, right. So three projects will be covered in network level one project will be covered. Auto scaling, one project will be covered. And uh, database level or other uh, Lambda, one more project will be covered. Okay. Three hands-on project will be covered here. In so, four years experience Yes, yes, yes. Once complete this course, you can showcase at least you repeat, years uh, your phone number again? Sorry, CV. Yes, yes. I prepare your Could CV. you repeat your phone number? Could you repeat your can you come again? Could you repeat you... your phone number, please? Ah, yeah. So my mobile number here is uh, 964 9642211711. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. You can WhatsApp me. You can call me. I'll be, uh, yeah, to give you uh, whatever you require, information I provide you. Uh, hello. Uh, what if yeah. we miss the online classes? Like, is there any recorded classes that we can refer again? Mm -hmm. Can you come again? Online classes? 
Yeah. All and often what? both are the same time. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay. What, what if we miss any online class? <laughs> Your voice is not clear. Can you come again? Can you chat in chat here? Can you put your uh, chat message in this chat? Uh, sir, he is asking in case if we miss the classes, uh, is there any uh, recording question? Are you going to got it? Got it. Yes. If you miss any classes, you will access recordings, right? You will access recordings. We provide you recordings. You can access recordings. You can go through the recording and you can uh, note down if you have any questions, you can ask me. Yes, the recording is for some duration or? One year, one year duration. One year you can access recordings. Practically, okay. support, uh, so what about the links who will provide? Uh, on a yeah, so we have Google Classroom will provide you one, uh, one meeting, one uh, Google Drive, like kind of Google Drive, right? So Google Classroom. In that, you can access all the recordings. All the recordings are available daily. We upload into the Google Classroom. You can access the link. You can check the all the recordings, right? One year available. That recordings will be available one year. Also, when you practice, right? Uh, is there any coming lab? Right, yes. Yeah, you can uh, take your laptop. You can bring your laptop here. You can practice here. We have third floor. Yeah, in third floor, we have a uh, lab, lab room. Yeah. You, you can bring your laptop. Here, we okay, don't provide any laptop. Internet will be provided. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, uh, they can help if you, if you have any. Yes, yes. Fine. Any other questions, anyone here? Hi, sir. As a AWS architect, uh, what type of job roles we are having in this group? Right. Fine. So basically, on only AWS, there is no jobs. Clearly, I'm saying. But if you are good in AWS, along with this AWS, at least one or two DevOps tools required. Okay. So AWS is very important. It is a platform, right? Along with this, you required one or two DevOps tools also, right? So few companies, they are offering only on AWS, but most of the companies, they're asking DevOps tools also, Jenkins, mm -hmm. uh, Kubernetes, like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. I know. Only yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Sir, are you going to take the Kubernetes class? Yeah, we have another batch which is a DevOps. DevOps also going to start very soon. Okay. okay. DevOps with multi cloud. Yeah. First March at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah. yeah. I'm only the trainer. So, first March onwards, uh, DevOps course also will be started. DevOps batch. So, already I completed 69 batches. 69 batches, DevOps and cloud. Okay. Yeah. From March 1st, one more batch is going to start, which is the DevOps with multi cloud. AWS Azure Google Cloud. So here, this is a full AWS course, but in multi-cloud with the DevOps course, 18 services will be covered. AWS will not be covered fully. Limited. limited. Azure also limited. Google Cloud also limited. That is three months course. But including DevOps. All, including all, DevOps, yes. But limited uh, concepts in uh, cloud side. Yes, yes, correct. Fine. Any other questions? Sir. Yeah, whoever learning this AWS course, full course, you can opt DevOps course also. Whatever fee you are paying here for this AWS, that will be reduced in the DevOps course. That is one opportunity here. Whoever joining AWS full course, you are paying 4,000 something here, right? Yeah, so in a, if you want to opt DevOps course, that is 22,000 basically. 
right? In that 22,000, 4,000 will be reduced. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, please. Sir, in this cloud architect position, coding is required or no? No, no, no coding, zero coding here. Okay, coding is not required here. DevOps also no coding. DevOps requires small, small scripts, scripting required. So very user friendly scripts. Okay. Yeah, we can uh, go deep drive. Uh, even uh, Jenkins, in Q DevOps, we have Jenkins, Kubernetes, right? Small, small scripts will be there. Those are very easier, very simple. Okay. We'll go deep drive. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. So tomorrow onwards, uh, Checklist like sessions will be started. If you are interested, you can uh, register today, right? You can reach out to my number or institute number so that uh, our people will provide you information, right? You can register yourself and you can continue from tomorrow. Tomorrow also, same link will work. You can attend tomorrow also without any charges, okay? Tomorrow also, demo, will be not demo, not same demo. Tomorrow, some basics will be covered, basic level, okay? Fine. Okay. Yes, tomorrow also can attack. Without registration. Same link will work. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Say, what are the topics uh, I have to learn in Python scripting language for using DevOps tools? Yeah, so I explained that. Okay, I, I explained that. So if you, if you want to attend DevOps, so just ping me, I'll provide you details. Okay. I provide DevOps content also. Okay, sir. Thank you. Fine. So we can stop here. From tomorrow, regular sessions will be started. Same link will work tomorrow also. Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, log in at uh, 6 p.m. sharp. Right, session will be started at 6 p.m. Right. So tomorrow we'll work on some uh, basic level, cloud basics. Okay. Fine. So we can stop here. Yeah. Thank you all.